are tonight's winning Powerball numbers. We will repeat these numbers in a few minutes during CARE 11 News at 10. This is CARE 11 News at 10. It was the unthinkable. You don't think to see something like that. Witnesses say a woman dropped her two children into the Mississippi River before jumping off a bridge in downtown St. Paul. Thank you for joining us. Rick has the night off. Crews are still searching for one of the children tonight. The woman and the other child were rescued last night just after they went in the water. The entire tragedy played out in front of thousands of people gathered to watch fireworks on Harriet Island. We begin our team report with CARE 11 Scott Goldberg live along the river. Scott. Brad and Christine, tonight the focus has shifted back to the west side of the Wabastaw Bridge as another crowd is gathering, getting ready to watch fireworks once again. For most of the day today, in fact, since 9.15 last night, though, the talk has been about what happened on this east side of the bridge when a mother and her two young children went into the river. Tonight, the boats have stopped searching, but they'll be back here again tomorrow looking for the one boy who is still in the water and presumed dead. Not far from the fun, they were searching for a body. Ramsey County Water Patrol was looking for a one-year-old boy, witnesses said, was thrown into the Mississippi by his 24-year-old mother. Our information is that her behavior didn't draw attention to herself prior to the act. St. Paul police wouldn't say if the woman was intoxicated or taking any kind of behavior-altering medicine. It's unknown at this time. Or if she'd ever tried killing herself before. That's under investigation. What investigators have are witnesses. I saw a baby falling. Mahmoud Hassan says he saw only one baby fall. Others told police there were two. They were one-year-old twins, some said thrown off the Wabasha Bridge by a woman who then took the 75-foot plunge herself. She wouldn't shut up. All she screamed is just freedom, freedom, freedom. Hassan said he was the second man in a group of rescuers who pulled the woman and one of the boys out of the river. Her injuries are considered non-serious. Both were taken to Regions Hospital. She's in police custody there, facing two charges of attempted murder. Heroic. And police say the boy in the hospital will be all right as well. I'm impressed that a citizen would jump into a river and uh, make an effort that he did. Thanks to the strangers who went in and saved one of the drowning twins' lives. It's pretty tough right now. I honestly wish I would have looked for the other baby instead of taking her out of the water. Police say they don't know if the woman who is from St. Paul is married, but they say they believe she has other children. The boy who survived will most likely be placed in custody with relatives, and the woman could be charged with attempted murder, and if they find a body out here with murder as well, as soon as Monday. Brad and Christine. All right, Scott, Thanks thank you lot, very Scott. much. Well, as we mentioned, the dramatic events last night unfolded in front of a crowd gathered to watch fireworks at the Taste of Minnesota. CARE 11's Amy Hocker continues our team report with more reaction from stunned witnesses. It was unthinkable. You don't think to see something like that. Christina Manning saw what happened last night on the Wabasha Bridge. But you can see the baby's hands come up and then go down and come up and go down. She needed to come back today mm -hmm. because part of her still can't believe it. How could she do something like that? Nothing in the world couldn't be that bad where she's going to kill her kids. Why did she drown her baby? Why did she throw her babies in the water? Felicia Smith was also there with her four-year-old son. She'd spend the rest of the night consoling him, trying to explain the unexplainable. I just held him tight. We just sat there on the couch, and I just kept holding and telling him some people go through things that's unimaginable. I don't know what was going on with her, but we're going to pray for her. Amy Hockert, CARE 11 News, St. Paul. We talked to the family of the woman in custody today. They say they are devastated by what happened. A mountain man is dead tonight, and a Minnetonka man is in jail following a case of boat rage. Authorities say it started with two boaters fighting on Lake Minnetonka last night. They say it ended when 31-year-old Ryan Newstead was thrown overboard and run over by the other man's boat. It's one of the most popular spots on any summer weekend, especially the 4th of July. The lake itself is extremely busy. We have a lot of uh, people are recreating. And there's nothing that draws big crowds and boaters like Big Island on Lake Minnetonka. But sometimes all that traffic can lead to problems. And everybody's kind of jockeying for that perfect position out on the lake to where they can anchor and enjoy their day. And we do have a lot of people that do 
get into confrontations. And authorities say that's what happened last night. After searching for hours, dive crews pulled the body of Ryan Newstad out of the water just before midnight. The Hennepin County Water Patrol says Newstad got into a verbal argument with another boater that quickly turned violent. Officials say the suspect threw Newstad overboard, put his boat into gear, and ran him over. Shocking to hear what happened. The Water Patrol calls it boat rage, but Newstad's roommate can't believe his friend was looking for a fight. No, he never looked for trouble. But unfortunately, trouble found him. I just feel really bad and wish it never happened. The Water Patrol says this example is extreme, but officers run into all kinds of fights on the lake. Anything that usually can happen on land also happens on the lake with watercraft. With watercraft and with alcohol. Authorities say drinking only makes things worse. Boating and alcohol is extremely dangerous, and when you have everybody on board drinking, it's very difficult to control a watercraft safely, and that's when the verbal arguments uh, arise from that. And Authorities say all alcohol played a role in last night's incident. Investigators are still trying to figure out whether the suspect deliberately ran over the victim with his boat or if it was an accident. But a 37-year-old Minnetonka man was arrested. He could be charged with murder. Another man in the suspect's boat could also face charges. One person is dead following a shooting tonight in North Minneapolis. Witnesses reported hearing numerous gunshots around 7 on 21st Avenue between Russell and Sheridan. Police arrived and found a man in his 20s lying in the street. The victim has not yet been identified. Police are still searching for the suspect as well as a motive in the shooting. Friends and family are remembering a Minnesota soldier killed by a sniper's bullet in Iraq. Edward Jim Hergod of Shakopee was shot while guarding the newly reopened National Museum in Baghdad Thursday. Hergod talked to his parents the day before he died and warned them he would be patrolling a dangerous part of the city. Jim was a great kid. He'd give you the shirt off his back. He's gone from our family. But he was doing what he was there to do. He died serving his country. Her God graduated from Shakopee High School in 2001. His body will be likely returned home in about 10 days. Funeral arrangements are pending. Seven Iraqi police cadets were killed in a bomb blast during their graduation ceremony today. U.S. officials say the attack west of Baghdad is the work of desperate men still loyal to Saddam Hussein. But no one has claimed responsibility for the attack. The cadets had just completed police training carried out by U.S. authorities. And in Moscow, at least 14 people were killed when two women suicide bombers blew themselves up at an outdoor rock concert. The attack earlier today also injured dozens. Despite Russian government claims, Chechen rebels say they were not behind the blasts. Seven people have drowned along a three-mile stretch of Lake Michigan in Michigan. Other swimmers formed human chains yesterday to try to find four people missing from one beach. There were no lifeguards on duty, but flags posted on the beach warned swimmers of a big wave and a strong undertow. Some families visiting the Taste of Minnesota are learning more about protecting their children. The Jacob Wetterling Foundation is offering free child identification kits, including fingerprints and digital photos at their booth. Both are extremely important to have on hand in case a child disappears. That way, information can be sent out quickly to law enforcement and the media. We're working with parents and children to make sure that every parent has the accurate height, weight, and digital photo of their child. And then we encourage them to updo the update that every year so that they have accurate information. It's what helps the AMBER plan work fast and effectively when it's needed. The Jacob Wetterling Foundation is named for a boy who was abducted by a stranger nearly 14 years ago. Jacob has never been found. You can stop by the foundation's booth again tomorrow at the Taste of Minnesota on Harriet Island. Also at the Taste of Minnesota this year, a Powerball booth. <laughs> And the Powerball booth was a busy place today ahead of tonight's $200 million drawing. That's the fourth largest jackpot ever. In case you missed the winning numbers at the top of the show, here they are again. 17, 49, 5, 25, 37. And the Powerball there is 21. I have a good feeling. My tickets are on my desk. I forgot to bring them out, but I have a good feeling. I think I won. I was going to say, you're still here, so you probably didn't. No, that's for sure. It's always my luck. Anyway, still ahead. We managed to pull out another gorgeous summer day. But Mother Nature could end the holiday weekend with some fireworks of her own. Bell's forecast is next. Plus, the roller coaster ride for the twins continues. Highlights from the dome in sports. And later, Minnesotans try out to be millionaire Donald Trump's sidekick.
All the fireworks last night contributed to an air quality alert here in the Twin Cities today. The air quality index hit 125 in the metro. That means the air is unhealthy for sensitive people, including the very young, the very old, and those with asthma. You could have fooled me. It was beautiful. I was going to say those pictures look nothing like it was today. Yeah, crystal clear. But you know, it is kind of hard to see that obviously. And when you get up high like that camera is, you can really see it. Along with that, we've had really kind of stagnant weather over the last uh, couple of days. But uh, that air quality alert is not in effect for tomorrow. And the reason, one of the main reasons, is actually because we're going to get a front. We're going to have winds, and yes, we're going to get some rainfall to kind of. Uh, and your holiday weekend after a beautiful day today. Well, let's take a look at how nice it was. With the exception of a couple of thunderstorms right up here along the North Shore, a couple showers, it has been a beautiful day. 66 in Ely, 79 this afternoon in Silver Bay, 81 in Duluth, 86 as you see there in Moose Lake, Detroit Lakes, 84. Folks that are watching us from Brainerd decided to spend their holiday weekend up there. Wow, beautiful, 84. And all across the metro today, temperatures range between 81 and 86 degrees. So it was a nice day. Lots of clear skies, barely a cloud to be found. Things are a changing, though. We have a front that's going to be approaching uh, tomorrow, and there will be some thunderstorms that will be rumbling across the state, reaching our area around the dinner hour and then later than that as well. Let's take a look at the fireworks over uh, to the, to, well, I don't know if we're going to see fireworks. I guess the, we saw the finale and a lot of fireworks the last couple of nights. We'll see if we see a few here on the St. Paul camera. The bottom line is, though, it was warm, and we didn't have any fireworks from Mother Nature today. 86 and 66 were the high and low. 83 and 62 are the normals, and there's your sunrise, 533. 78 degrees is our current temperature with partly, cl partly cloudy skies. Our dew point is up there. It's at 65. It's going to feel very, very humid tomorrow. Humidity levels really go up a notch or two tomorrow afternoon, and the pressure is steady at 29.85. We start out with SkyScan, and I've gone down and uh, we've zoom, zoom, zoomed into the Sioux Falls area because these thunderstorms that are now currently uh, just about to move into Sioux Falls, into Sioux City, are going to rumble across northern Iowa and the southern tier of counties of Minnesota tonight. And that is going to give us a shot of getting some clouds and some late night, early morning showers. The southern metro and then south of there, Fairbolt, Northfield, Cannon Falls, Red Wing, those areas, Lake City, a better chance of getting some rainfall tomorrow morning early. Then it moves out and we really heat up during the afternoon and also uh, during the evening hours tomorrow as well. As we take a look at the radar replay for the last couple of days, as you can see, this corridor has been very active each and every night. Thunderstorms develop in uh, northeastern Nebraska in the early morning or the late night hours, and then they move across northern Iowa. And you can see it happen. it's been happening each and every night. And once again tonight, that's exactly what the story is. Along with that, we have this cold front that is going to be of major concern by late tomorrow afternoon across the state. And that's going to uh, spark those thunderstorms in the western side of the state earlier in the day or in the afternoon hours and then move across through the eastern side of the state during uh, the late day hours. As you can see here, here's the cloud uh, blossom of clouds for those thunderstorms that are off to our south and west. And those are once again going to bloom, blossom over the area. There will be some clouds in the morning and then it will clear up. It's going to be 90. It's going to be humid. We're going to have a strong south wind by late in the afternoon. And all of this is out ahead of a cold front that is going to spark some thunderstorms. And we are under a moderate risk for severe weather. So let's run through the forecast and let you know what you can expect. It's going to become partly cloudy. Uh, it's clear now, but it will become partly cloudy with some scattered storms early tomorrow morning, mo mostly in the southern suburbs. Then tomorrow, after a few early morning showers, it'll become sunny, hot, and humid with daytime highs in the 90s and evening storms redeveloping. Some of those will be severe tomorrow night. Monday morning, after a couple of rain showers, the rest of the day looks good and less humid. Tuesday night, another chance of getting thunderstorm. So, you know, this, this 4th of July weekend is really going to go down on the record books as being pretty quiet other than uh, we'll have to watch those storms tomorrow night. I felt bad for the people in the south. I saw some pictures. They were all rained out yesterday. Yeah, a lot of areas. That's we right. got lucky. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bill. Well, coming up in sports, the Williams sisters battle it out at Wimbledon. Plus, a local woman shines brightly at the U.S. Open. And it's anything but bright for the Twins tonight at the Dome. Tim McNiff has highlights, if you can call them that. That's next. <laughs>
Welcome back. Time now for sports with Tim McNiff. You know, Powerball was a safer bet tonight than the Twins. Oh, no. <laughs> man. It's like one in 120 million, I think. That's pretty sad. That is a team really in trouble. And tonight, worse than usual, yeah. if that's possible. Twin skipper Ron Gardenhier says that changes are on the way, and it could start with pitcher Joe Mays. But after Cleveland's crushing win tonight, the Twins might be thinking about a guy they let get away. Mays takes the mound knowing he has to pitch well, but when Casey Blake drives in Milton Bradley and Shane Spencer, it's already 3-0 Cleveland, and folks, we are just in the top of the first, third inning. It's Blake again. The former twin singles pass Christian Guzman at short. Ben Broussard beats Dustin Moore's throw to the plate, and the Tribe leads 5-1 as Mays departs. On the night, Casey Blake goes 5-for-5, five five, belting not one but two home runs while driving in a career-high seven runs as the Indians route the Twins 13-2. They'll wrap up the series tomorrow at 1. The Minnesota Timberwolves welcome a couple of young pups into the pack this evening. One we already know, the other wants us to get to know him sooner than later. Here's Pat Sidoti with more. It's show and tell at the Target Center today. On display, two young pups set to join the Wolf Pack. One we already know, former gopher Rick Rickert, drafted late in the second round and still determined to do it his way. Hey. It's not about what other people think, it's about what's in my heart. This is what I felt was right. The other is Andy Eby, straight out of high school to the biggest basketball stage on earth. I'm ready to play basketball and I just thank the Minnesota organization for uh, picking me with the 26th pick and I'm just uh, ready to get started. Because he's fresh out of high school, the Wolves say they'll take it slow with Eby. But this team can't afford to be too pokey because they definitely have some holes to fill. I'm still waiting for the guy to make you a great player because we'll, we'll hire that guy and he'll touch you. Now you're a great player. That doesn't happen. You make yourself a great player. EB signs for three years with an option on the fourth as both players set out to prove themselves on the Wolves' summer league roster. You know, we're not in a situation where we're just going to give guys playing time. You know, you earn your time. and. Uh, and if he can be effective for us and help us win games, then he's going to receive as far as more playing time. In Nigeria, the word Andy means life. The Wolves gave Andy to Rickert late in the second round, and they hope EB will provide Andy in future playoffs. Pat Sidoti, Carol Evans Sports. Target center tonight. The Lynx could have used some ND. They're hosting the Cleveland Rockers. Katie Smith with 17 of her team high 21 in the second half. But Smith fouls out while Cleveland's Deanna Jackson ties a team record by scoring 30 points as the Lakers, the Rockers rather, lay a 79-71 loss on the Lynx. Well, the name has changed, but the swing remains the same. Back in 1997, Edina's Hillary Holmeyer was a prep athlete of the week. Tonight, Hillary Lunke is your third round leader at the Women's U.S. Open. As many of the top names on the LPGA Tour were coming unraveled in today's third round, Lunky cards a three under 68, vaulting herself to the top of the leaderboard. And as such, Hillary Lunky, who's never finished higher than 15th in an LPGA event, will now take a one-shot lead to the tee box tomorrow. It's Lunky by a stroke over her college rival Angela Stanford. Annika Sorenstam, who's fighting a sore throat, is three shots back with three other players. And we will have coverage of tomorrow's final round teeing off at 2 o'clock. To the PGA Western Open, where it's still Tiger Woods in a runaway. Tiger shaking the slump talk with a tournament record 18 under through three rounds of play. Woods cards a 7 under 65 today. And Tiger will take a six shot lead over Robert Allenby and Cliff Kresge to the course tomorrow. In tennis, Serena Williams defends her Wimbledon title by posting yet another win over big sister Venus. Interesting first set, Venus starts fast and takes it to little sister Serena, Serena winning the set 6-4. But Serena rebounds to take the second also by a score of 6-4 before Venus leaves the match to receive treatment for aggravating an abdominal strain. The third set then is a mere formality. Serena wins it in the match, 4-6, 6-4 and 6-2. Serena has now won five of tennis's last six major titles. NASCAR back at the Daytona International Speedway and back on CARE 11 for tonight's Pepsi 400. A race that's all about fuel and who has enough at the finish. And it's rookie Greg Biffle bagging a biggie in just his 23rd start. Jeff Burton finishes second. And finally, American Lance Armstrong finishes seventh in today's prologue time trial of the Centennial Tour de France. The four-time defending champion finishes more than six seconds behind stage winner Bradley McGee of Australia. A fifth tour victory for Armstrong would match the record of cycling legend Miguel Indurain. He'll do the same thing he always does, just bide his time till he hit the mountains, crush everybody, and bring it home again. He is amazing. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you very much.
Well, still to come, local moguls in waiting try to get a job with Donald Trump. Yeah, plus a look at tonight's winning lottery numbers if you got to catch him again. Who needs Before we go, dozens of local people auditioned today to be Donald Trump's assistant. The tryouts in downtown Minneapolis are for a new reality TV show called The Apprentice, starring Trump and is soon to be named Sidekick. And did we mention whoever gets picked for the job will also pull down a six-figure salary for a year? Today's tryouts in Minneapolis were the only local auditions. There are others around the country, and we'll let you know who wins. Seriously, if you went in there with a comb over, do you think you'd have an edge over the <laughs> <laughs> They say mirroring image. Yep, you never know. Thanks Thank a lot you. for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.